We're all looking forward to the first Starship orbital flight, and I bet SpaceX is a lot more excited than we are. They certainly have also been working extremely hard to make the miracle happen soon. However, is SpaceX ready to launch Starship in March? We were getting close for our first orbital attempt of, of Starship. Hopefully in the next month or so, we'll, we'll have our first attempt. I'm not saying it'll get to orbit, but I am guaranteeing excitement. That's what Elon Musk just shared at the Morgan Stanley 2023 Technology, Media, and Telecommunication Conference, the TMT, on March the 7th. Yep, March cannot be the charm. But why did Musk once again break his promise? What does SpaceX need to accomplish to make the flight happen? Let's find out everything about it today in this episode of Alpha Tech. The highly anticipated Starship orbital test was scheduled for March 11th, as of last week, according to a NASA calendar managed by NASA's Airborne Science Program, which coordinates a set of aircraft to monitor and record spacecraft activities during tests and missions. But a time slot for SpaceX's Starship orbital test on NASA's calendar has been removed, adding new uncertainties around the highly anticipated flight of the world's largest privately developed rocket. Well, rockets are never easy, and the Starship monster is more than that. It's been over 18 months since a Starship prototype left the ground, making a successful high-altitude flight and landing for the first time in 2021. A handful of high-altitude launches in 2020 and 2021 saw Starship prototypes crash land or explode while attempting to land. Musk's comments earlier this month emphasized the challenges of launching and landing the new system that will become part of the most powerful space vehicle in history when successful. This is a very difficult program. The, the rocket is um, roughly two and a half times the thrust of a Saturn V, so if it went, or, if or once it reaches orbit, it will be uh, by far the biggest rocket to reach orbit. But more importantly, it is designed to be the first fully reusable rocket, orbital rocket uh, ever. So the, the key to uh, extending life beyond Earth is a fully and rapidly reusable orbital rocket. Um, this is a very hard problem given the constraints of, of Earth. With Earth has a thick atmosphere and strong gravity. It is only barely possible to do this. Um, that is why it has not been done before. When the Starship test flight happens, Musk believes that... Hopefully above 50% chance of reaching orbit. Musk ended the Morgan Stanley interview by stating that Starship could make life multiplanetary real by expanding life to Mars. All right, so let's try to wait for Starship to come a little later this year. Let's get back to the current situation. The most unpredictable barrier is probably still the FAA license. On the regulatory side, SpaceX still has to settle a few issues with the Federal Aviation Administration, which issues the launch licenses for all space missions in the U.S. SpaceX has not received a license from the FAA to launch Starship just yet. The federal agency completed a lengthy environmental review of the proposed test in June last year and required SpaceX to take on more than 75 actions to mitigate environmental impacts related to the flight. The FAA will make a license determination only after the agency is satisfied SpaceX meets all licensing, safety, and other regulatory requirements, an FAA spokesperson said in an email. Notably, on February 17th, the FAA issued a $175,000 fine against SpaceX for failing to submit required data for a Falcon 9 mission in August of 2022. The agency alleged SpaceX didn't submit launch collision analysis trajectory data prior to the mission, which sent a batch of Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. Those data are needed to assess the probability of spacecraft colliding with one of the thousands of tracked objects orbiting Earth, according to an FAA notice. It's the first time the FAA proposed a civil penalty for a rocket operator failing to submit data before a launch. SpaceX was given 30 days to respond to the FAA's notice. And this definitely needs to be solved before the FAA makes a final decision on the Starship flight. For its part, S-24 and B-7 seem to be completed soon, but Starbase is not quite ready yet. Firstly, the GSE tanks need to be filled. 
The Super Heavy booster requires 3,400 tons of propellant to boost the Starship upper stage, which then burns through another 1,200 tons of methane and O2 to get its 100 tons of payload into low Earth orbit. So for a total expenditure of 4,600 tons of methane and liquid oxygen, you get 100 tons into LEO. If you want to get the Starship and its payload out of Earth's orbit and traveling to another destination within the inner solar system, you'll need to refuel the upper stage in LEO. If you want the full 6 kilometers Delta V that the system is capable of delivering for maximum range and speed, then another 8 full Starship flights are required to fully refill the craft. That works out to 8 times 4,600 plus 1,200, which is 38,000 tons of propellant expended for the refueling operation. Besides, the OLM also needs more time to perfect. Here's the current status of the OLM. The shielding on the OLM on the top half is almost done. A couple of more weeks, we'll have a bottom as well. And last but not least, SpaceX is already installing a water deluge system that will eventually make the South Texas Starship launch site much more capable of withstanding the stress of Starship tests and launches for a month. Let's be reminded that the pressure of a rocket exhaust isn't simply the chamber pressure divided by the area of the surface the plume impacts on. There's also the issue of those pops and crackles produced by rocket exhaust due to extreme pressure waves and the supersonic flow colliding with the ambient atmosphere or lithosphere or anthroposphere. These are shock waves, not just pressure waves. The major purpose of a water deluge system is to absorb the bulk of the energy of those shock waves, partly to absorb thermal energy as well. And some people will tell you it's to protect the rocket from the shock waves, but it's also to protect the GSE. But to complete a water deluge, you know it's not that simple. The SpaceX team will take months at least. The system must be designed to provide a constant stream of water during a rocket launch in order to keep the launch pad cool and protect it from intense heat and flames generated during the launch. One of the key challenges in building a rocket water deluge system is the customization required for each rocket. Each rocket has a unique water flow and pressure requirement, which means that the system must be customized to meet those specific requirements. Another important consideration in building a rocket water deluge system is safety. The system must be designed to operate reliably in safety during launch, and it must be able to withstand extreme conditions like high winds and lightning strikes. Safety is paramount in rocket launch facilities, and any failure of the water deluge system could result in a catastrophic consequence. The size and complexity of rocket launch facilities also pose a challenge in building a rocket water deluge system. Large launch facilities cover a vast area with multiple launch pads and launch structures. The water deluge system must be designed to cover the large area with multiple nozzles strategically placed around the launch pad and configured to deliver water to all those nozzles at the correct pressure and flow rate. This requires a team of experienced engineers and technicians working together to design and build the system to the highest standards of safety and reliability. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode, and don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video, and for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.